celebrate 75 years of All-State Sugar Bowl, 75 years of tradition. Football in the South has lived inside these walls. Here comes the Nippy Land. Hit it, hold back. He did not get in. 75 years of memories. How sweet it's been. From national championships to individual feats of brilliance. He's going to be overhauled by Alabama. It's fumbled. It is taken by Key. He's going to run it back. Oh, Peter Warren, how'd you do that? The best player in college football is putting on a show tonight. Tonight, who will leave their mark? The world is again. Spinning on its axis correctly. An SEC powerhouse. Where legends are made. And a Cinderella chasing perfection. 12 and 0. Utah going to the BCS. We belong here. There's no reason why Utah can't play with the big powers in football. Alabama, Utah. The BCS Bowl Bash on Fox continues from the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. It's the 75th. All-State Sugar Bowl featuring the 12-0 Utah Utes and the 12-1 Alabama Crimson Tide. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to New Orleans. Kenny Albert along with Daryl Johnston, Chris Myers, and Carissa Thompson. A terrific matchup for you tonight between two programs that exceeded expectations this season. Utah, the only undefeated team in the nation. Alabama atop the polls for five consecutive weeks. Darrell, let's start with Utah. For the Utes tonight, a chance to put the exclamation point on their perfect 2008 season. A chance to show the country that the Mountain West does belong in the BCS equation. And make no mistake, in the history of Utah football, they've never faced an opponent like they'll face tonight in Alabama. But sitting down and talking to them, they are not intimidated. They respect Alabama, but they are not afraid of them. They're gonna come out, they're gonna do what they do. But they understand there is not a margin for error tonight. They cannot make mistakes. And on the other side, Darrell, Alabama started the season 12-0, looking to bounce back tonight from their loss in the SEC championship game to Florida. Well, it's a chance for Alabama to come out, respond, show that they are a great team because it's how you respond after a difficult loss. And everybody outside of the state of Utah who's not a Utah alum expects Alabama to win the game this evening. They're bigger. They're more physical. We've talked about the running game in the pregame show and what they're going to do tonight. Just come out and execute. Everybody wants you to win. Everybody expects you to win. Now come out and prove you can do that. It's the first ever meeting between these programs. Here come the 12-0 Utah Utes, who have the longest winning streak in the nation, the longest bowl win streak in the nation as well. They've won their last seven bowl appearances. Here come the 12-0 Utah Utes, led by head coach Kyle Whittingham. For the Utes, their first ever Sugar Bowl appearance. And it's going to be critical for them at the start of this game to come out and play well. And, and Alabama, they have to know that the longer you keep a team like Utah in the game, the harder it's going to be to put them away in the fourth quarter. They're going to gain confidence the longer they're in this football game. For anybody who thought there was a chance that the Alabama Crimson Tide would overlook Utah and not respect them and what they've done in compiling this perfect record this season, you're sadly mistaken. We watched their practice this week. The last practice getting ready for this game was so impressive. It was up-tempo. It was quick. There were very little mistakes. They are ready to play this evening. Here come the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome back to the Louisiana Superdome. Ben Vroman getting set to kick off for Utah. On the left, Mike McCoy. On the right, Javier Arenas, one of the best return men in the nation. Back deep for the Crimson Tide. Utah 12 and 0, Alabama 12 and 1. The 75th All-State Sugar Bowl is underway. 
Opening kickoff taken at the one-yard line by Arenas. Arenas tackled at the 28-yard line by Clint Bauer. So the senior out of Hoover, Alabama, John Parker Wilson will lead the Crimson Tide offense out. He has broken school records for completions, attempts, passing yards, and touchdowns. Well, everybody's talked to him about coming out and managing the game, and the best way to do that, hand the ball off to Glenn Coffey, let him run behind this big physical offensive line. The two tight ends, very critical. Mike Johnson obviously getting the start tonight for Andre Smith. David Ross takes his spot at left guard. This is Glenn Coffey running left on first down across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Coffey has gained over 1,300 yards so far this season. Well, you heard Barry Switzer talk in the pregame show. He wants to see how this defense does when Alabama runs north and south. They're a little bit smaller. They're going to utilize their quickness. They're not going to line up and not be uh, fluid in their movements and line up in front of these big offensive linemen of the Crimson Tide. On second and six, off the play fake to Coffey. The catch is made by... One of the two tight ends you spoke about, Darrell Nick Walker. 29 receptions this season, most by an Alabama tight end in 19 years. And everybody talks about Glenn Coffey and Julio Jones, but I really like the combination of Travis McCall and Nick Walker at the tight end position. They run play action. You've got to be honest with the boots and the sneaks that come out of that offense on the backside. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Four receivers set, Coffey blown back. And Coffey tackled back at the 34-yard line. Loss of four yards on the play, and when we spoke with Paul Kruger yesterday, he told us we must get into the backfield early. They have to. They've got to utilize their quickness. That is what Utah is about. Paul Kruger coming from the outside right out here. Look at the position. He doesn't chase down along the line of scrimmage. He stays upfield. When Glenn Coffey comes to come the back side, he's right there to make the tackle. Two tight ends, second down and 14. From the 34-yard line, opening possession of the game for Alabama. Wilson with loads of time. He throws, and it's dropped by a wide open Julio Jones. Again, it's another one of the bread and water plays of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Julio Jones, the bottom of your screen. He's going to get into that second tier. Little collision right there. Comes wide open on the backside, but unable to pull that one in. Jones, a true freshman, leads the Crimson Tide with 51 receptions. Alabama now facing a third down and 14. One of the areas that Nick Saban is concerned, he calls these loose downs. This is where he's really worried about the quickness of Utah. Penalty markers prior to the snap. Wilson taken down back at the 26. You can see right there the first opportunity in one of those situations that Coach Saban was worried about, and they get pressure. Going to move to the outside. Going to hit it on the run. The quickness of Utah gets to quarterback John Parker Wilson. P.J. Fitzgerald back at his own 15-yard line. Brent Castillo loses the football. But it bounces right into the hands of his teammate, who spent part of his childhood living right here in New Orleans, R.J. Rice. What a heads-up play by R.J. Rice. We talked about the margin for error. They cannot turn the ball over there in that situation. Welcome back. Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Chris Myers, Carissa Thompson from the Louisiana Superdome. Following the Alabama punt, the Utes led out by quarterback Brian Johnson, the Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year. He's thrown nine touchdown passes over his last two games. First and ten for Utah from their own 32-yard line. Johnson over the top. First down and more. Jeremy Brooks 
Finally forced out of bounds after a 19-yard pickup. That's what they want to do on offense. Spread it out. Let their guys get into open space. Brian Johnson very confident in what this offense is going to be able to do this evening against Alabama. A great set of wide receivers to work with. And here's the group that I was impressed with during the week at practice. A very consistent offensive line. They work very well together. Two plays, two first downs. Darrell Mack out of the backfield, picks up 14. Thirty-three yards on the first two plays for Utah. From the 35, Johnson going deep, and it is hauled in by Braden Godfrey. LA two yards. Alabama has struggled this season when people go no huddle and they play up-tempo offense. It's happened several times during the course of this season to them. Utah's come out and jumped in that right away. Three plays, three first downs. From the Alabama 13, the slant is caught at the six-yard line by Freddie Brown. Kareem Jackson made the tackle, gain of seven. Trying to find out if Freddie Brown maintained possession through this catch. Alabama saying incomplete. Boy, he landed hard on that turf. Kareem Jackson got underneath him, spun him back. Every play is reviewed upstairs in the replay booth. Second down and three. From just inside the seven. Complete, diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Brent Castile. Jimmy Johnson wanted to know about the rest with John Parker Wilson in this long layoff. How about the defense? Boy, they looked absolutely shocked by the Utah offense and the way they took the field. A five-play, 68-yard drive down. It took a minute, 19 seconds. The Utes out to a 7-0 lead over the Crimson Tide. What a start for the Utes. Brian Johnson, five for five, 68 yards, hit five different receivers on the opening drive. Uh, that was an unbelievable offensive series for Utah. And, and there were several times where Alabama was not even able to get lined up and get set in their defense. Roman's kickoff taken three yards deep by Arenas. Arenas spinning across the 25. Out to the 28-yard line, R.J. Stanford made the tackle. Go back and take a look at that last offensive series and, and watch Utah. They're up at the line of scrimmage. They're calling the play. They're all set. Look at the movement with Alabama. They catch him flat-footed right out to the flat. Bryant Castile, touchdown. Brits and Todd go back to work from their own 28-yard line. This is Coffee. Out across the 30. Koamisi and Paul Kruger in on the tackle, a gain of two for Glenn Coffey, who gained 112 yards on the ground in the SEC championship game against Florida. We wanted to know about the response by Alabama after the loss to Florida. Now let's see what the response is after that opening series. They had an offensive series, a defensive series. Did not go well at all on either side of the ball. Relax. Everything's fine. It's 7-0 Utah. Don't panic. Stick with what you do. Wilson out of the shotgun on second and eight. And the pass is intercepted. And taken back to the 32-yard line by Robert Johnson. His third pick of the season. Robert Johnson, number 17, out there on the left hash. That's just a bad throw by John Parker Wilson. Not a whole lot that Robert Johnson has to do to make that interception. Alabama does not know what hit him. The Utes led the Mountain West Conference with 17 interceptions this season. Sets up great field position for Utah from 
The Alabama 32. Johnson on first down. He's five for five going deep and throws it out of the end zone intended for Castile, who has the huge touchdown. Nice job by Rashad Johnson. He's not getting full double move right there by the Utah Utes trying to hit another big play right away. Coming off the turnover, let's go right at him. Let's see if we can get up 14 to nothing right away. Utah looking to capitalize on the turnover. Matt Asiata in the backfield. Asiata brought down by the junior Brandon Dederick along with sophomore Rolando McLean. Now Utah for them to have success tonight it's going to be the passing game but but they do have to make some commitment to the run and it's not about setting a number of how many yards you're going to get tonight or how many yards per carry you'd like to get tonight but Kyle Whittingham knows that he has to at least let Alabama know he's not afraid to run the football into that front and you'll see the read keep the read option speed sweeps a lot of different ways to run the ball even some of their screens in their passing game will take the place of runs Four receivers set, third and ten from the Alabama 32. Johnson firing downfield, and the catch is made for a first down inside the five by David Reed. A 30-yard pass play. Marquise Johnson never gets his head around to find the ball. David Reed is just a simple go round. Now, these are passes you don't normally see from Utah. They're not a real big vertical team. Marquise Johnson doesn't get his head around. He's trying to get his hand up there, but right now it is Utah making all the critical plays in the early part of this game. Johnson, six for seven. He's hit six different receivers. First and goal from the Alabama two. Looking for Reed again, incomplete. Second and goal. Great play by Dante Hightower. Now this guy is a true freshman. He was playing high school football last year. Wow. I mean, absolutely amazing. You saw him. We saw him at practice, and I was so impressed by what he did. And on that play right there, as a middle, as an inside linebacker, they run motion across the formation. They've got the isolation they want. They got the matchup one on one. Johnson to the sidelines. This is the Asiata package. Matt Asiata will take the snap. Second and goal from the two. Asiata. Touchdown. Sakota adds the extra point. We have not yet played six and a half minutes. 14 nothing Utah. What a start for the Utes. 12th rushing touchdown of the season for Asiata. Alabama and their fans stunned. I'm stunned. Roman's kickoff taken at the two by Arenas. Boy, they are flying around. R.J. Rice makes the tackle. He recovered the fumble earlier on the Utah return. Brings down Arenas just shy of the 20. And how big of a play was that by R.J. Rice when he catches that bobble by Brent Castile. I mean, you're talking about turning the ball over to Alabama deep in your end. You get the ball back. You go right down the field in a no huddle. Interception on the next series. And then you're back in the end zone at 14 nothing. Two tight end set. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. And Coffey able to gain just one. 
not really surprised about what is happening in this game because of the matchup, but just because of how dominant Alabama has been in the first quarter this season. 133 to 27 tonight. They're down 14 nothing. And now this is the biggest deficit the Crimson Tide have faced all season. They trailed by 11 against Florida. The final score 31 20 was their previous biggest deficit. Second down and nine off the play fake. Wilson in trouble. Forced to throw it away. The pressure from Greg Newman. Well done by Greg Newman. Staying with your responsibility, not chasing the backside. Greg Newman's going to be contained here on the inside. Get upfield. Here comes your quarterback on the boot, right in his face. He did not go down the line and chase, did what his job was in that call. Wilson's taken some pounding tonight. Uh, they, they have gotten the front confused with the pressure they're, being, they're bringing. I think they're struggling a little bit with the quickness. Third down at nine for Alabama. Wilson can't find anyone. Wrapped up. Down he goes. Kemba Dyson starting for the injured nine for two. Loss of eight yards on the play. The ball's got to come out quicker. John Parker Wilson has to throw it away because right now they are not sustaining their blocks. Travis McCall on Kemba Geisen gets turned around. Bag technique gives him the short corner to come off the block. Fitzgerald back at his own 15-yard line, punting to Brent Castile. Bearcats call for it at the 35-yard line. First and 10 for Utah. From their own 35-yard line, leading 14-0. Johnson over the middle. Rolando McLean with the coverage. Freddie Brown, the intended receiver, as we check in with Carissa Thompson. Carissa? Well, guys, Utah fans couldn't be happier about the way that this game has started. In particular, 70 of them who chartered a bus Tuesday morning to make the trip down here. They almost didn't even make it out of the state. Apparently, the bus was over the weight limit, so they had to get a pardon from the governor. Then the bus broke down in Dallas. The bathroom broke. They got lost in Shreveport, Louisiana. And so after 38 hours and almost 1,800 miles, you guys, they finally made it here, and it was apparently worth every minute of the trip. Well, it certainly has been so far, Carissa, as Godfrey picks up a first down. Not sure how well our crew would do on a 38-hour bus ride. We, we would not do well. We would not do well, Kenny. I, I can't. I can't do the 38 hours on the bus. I, I might have. I might have gotten off in Dallas and gone to the airport and flown back home. And a pardon from the governor. Brown into Alabama territory. Knocked out of bounds by Kareem Jackson, gain of eight. Well, good to see Freddie Brown back out there. He took that, that big ball on that opening drive when he went up high for a pass and got undercut, landed on his back. Johnson on second down, intended for Castile. Ali Sharif on the coverage for the Crimson Tide. So a third down and four coming up for the Utes. Who lead Alabama 14-0. Utah must get to the 45-yard line for a first down. Johnson takes off. First down, and more as he slides at the 39-yard line. He needed four, and he gained nine. He is making great decisions right now. The one thing that is impressive about Brian Johnson when you watch him is his accuracy with the football. We've seen that tonight, but also just his decision-making. He's got pressure in his face pre-snap. You've got your linebackers, Dante Hightower and Rolando McClain walked up into the gaps. They drop out. He goes through his progression. Nothing's there. Pulls the ball down. Moves the chains. Back 
in the backfield. First and ten from the Alabama 40. Low snap. Johnson steps up, throws, and it's caught and taken down to the 33-yard line by Freddie Brown. Sharif makes the tackle for Brown, his third reception. Again, staying a little bit up tempo, forcing Alabama to keep their personnel on the field. They're not able to match right now with what Utah is putting out there offensively. Second down and three. Johnson for Castillo. Penalty marker. Pass interference on a defense number 26. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Brent Castile beyond Ali Sharif. Again, we saw it earlier with another pass to the opposite corner. Alabama, the defensive backs are not getting their head around to find the ball as it's coming in at the point of the catch. First and 10 from the 18-yard line following the penalty. Five receivers set. Johnson looking left. He throws, and the catch is made, extending across the goal line for a touchdown, Braden Godfrey. Wow, 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 Kenny. I cannot believe how Utah has started this game. Their execution is virtually flawless. They did not have a lot of margin for error, in my opinion, when this game started. And they have exceeded my expectations. They have played and executed unbelievable in this first quarter. Three Utah possessions, three Utah touchdowns. Stunning. Kyle Whittingham's Utah Utes out to a 21-0 lead over the Alabama Crimson Tide. Braden Godfrey in the slot, a little exchange right there, then a back shoulder fade, and again, how many times have we seen that this time it's Mark Barron? Not knowing where the ball is. By the time he figures it out, Brayton Godfrey's diving to the end zone for six. Boy, has Brian Johnson played well tonight. Johnson, 10 of 14, 139 yards, two touchdown passes. Roman kicking off for the fourth time. Arenas on the return. Touch to his right. And Javier Arenas brings it all the way out to the 42. A 36-yard return by Arenas. What's going through the minds of these Alabama players right now? They were 12-0. They lost in the SEC championship game. They have not played in 27 days, and they've fallen behind 21-0. Uh, if Nick Saban is thinking any way the same way I am right now, I would have my staff together and tell my players, hey, look at the clock right now. There is three minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, we've fallen behind 21-0, but we've got a lot of time to get back into this football game. Do not panic. 15 yards, Wilson to Nikita Stover. First and 10 from the Utah 43. Coffee. You were once in a similar situation in an NFC Championship game, were you not? Oh, we were. We, we played San Francisco out uh, on their home field, and it was 21-0 with about <laughs> five minutes gone in the game. And that was the one thing that we talked about. Hey, this game has started about as bad as it possibly could have for us. But the clock is our friend right now. Don't panic. Let's stick with our offense. Get back into this game. Alabama is not built to come from behind, but they don't have to. There's plenty of time left. Stay with what your plan was coming into the game. 
Second and six from the Utah 40. Under three minutes remaining, first quarter. Wilson again under pressure. He gets rid of it to Coffey, who picks up a first down. Finally tackled at the 26-yard line. Coffey gains 13. John Parker Wilson in the shotgun now. Paul Kruger, all right, number 11 on the defense. You have to know where he is. You have to have a man on him. You cannot turn him loose to your quarterback, even on a screen pass to the outside. If that was any other play besides one that he could get the ball quickly out to Glenn Coffey, it's going to be another big play for the Utah defense. Two tight end set, movement, and the play blown dead. Prior to the snap. False start on the offense, number 88, five-yard penalty, first down. Now here's something that the offensive front of Alabama is going to have to deal with all game. Utah does a great job of stemming right before the snap of the ball. Watch the two inside tackles right on your guards. Watch them stem. Very quickly, everybody moves, even the defensive end that time. Stay with the cadence of your quarterback. Don't go on the movement of the defender. Nick Walker, the guilty member of the Crimson Tide. First and 15 from the 32, Coffee, And Coffee takes it all the way down to the 21-yard line, gate of 11 before he was finally brought down by the Utes' leading tackler this season, Mike Wright. Second down and four. Two tight ends. Coffee in the backfield. Coffee up the middle. Brought down at the 18 yard line, a yard shy of an Alabama first down. Being able to stay ahead of the chains on the downs, and that was, you know, Kyle Whittingham. That was that was one of his concerns. Also coming in, Gary Anderson, defensive coordinator for Utah. We can't allow success on first down by Alabama. They can't come out and simply hand the ball off and start getting six yards. They've done that on the last couple of series. It puts them in very manageable third downs, and then all of a sudden you have John Parker Wilson. You start to hear that game manager term. These are the situations that he is very good at. Wilson under pressure. Down he goes. Back at the 37-yard line. Kenafe Iliopo, the junior out of San Francisco. The first quarter comes to an end here in New Orleans, Utah, leading Alabama 21 to nothing. We get set to start the second quarter, and that look just about sums up what most. Alabama fans must be thinking. Most all Alabama fans. Lee Tiffin out to attempt a 52-yard field goal. His career long is 54. His father holds the Alabama record at 57. Tiffin from 52. It is good. One yard shy of the all-time All-State Sugar Bowl record which is a 53-yard field goal. John Carroll of Oklahoma back in 1972, Alabama on the scoreboard. Welcome back. Utah leading Alabama 21-3. The Utes scoring three first-quarter touchdowns against an Alabama squad that allowed only 27 first-quarter points all season coming into this game. Lee Tiffin, 52-yard field goal moments ago. It's the first Alabama kickoff of the game. Castillo on the return. He scored the game's first touchdown. Castillo out to the 24-yard line. The Utes, Darrell, three possessions, three touchdowns. Each of their drives has taken less than two minutes. It's been impressive to watch. And it doesn't matter what Alabama does defensively. That opening series, Utah came out and went no huddle. 
Now to counter that, Alabama has been searching for a way to defend this offense. They have not been able to find a personnel group that they feel comfortable with. Five receivers set on first and ten from the 24. Johnson complete. Bernie Brown, his fourth reception. Second down and 15. Asiata in the backfield. Four wide receivers from the 35. Johnson could not find anyone. And then throws it in the vicinity of Asiata. Third and 15 upcoming. On the snap before, they bring a little bit of pressure, and they get to Brian Johnson. That time they drop out plate coverage, and he doesn't have anywhere to go with the football. Alabama finally kind of finding that comfort zone after several series where they just never really seem to be in sync trying to match up with this Utah offense. An Alabama defense that has allowed only 13 points per game, sixth in the nation. Behind 21 to 3. Utes must get to midfield for a first down. Jeremy Brooks taken down at the 41-yard line by Sharif. Utes will punt for the first time tonight. Good series by the Alabama defense. They get a negative play on the sack. For some long yardage situations. Good coverage right there. Ali Sharif running with Jeremy Brooks. Makes a good open field tackle. First time the Utes have gone three and out tonight. Sakota handles the place kicking and the punting chores. He's one of the best in the nation. The second punt tonight. Taken at the 27 by Arenas. Arenas with five career punt return touchdowns. Arenas down the sideline. This is going to be number six. Javier Arenas. Six career punt return touchdown extending his school record 73 yard return. That was all Javier Arenas. There was some good blocking right at the point of the catch that allowed him to get started. But after that, that's just a great effort by number 28. There's a guy stepping up to make a huge play to try and get this team, this game turned around to Alabama. We spoke with the punter, Sakota, yesterday. He told us he was going to try and angle his punts away from Arenas. 73 yards on the return, the ninth non-offensive touchdown of the season scored by the Crimson Tide. First in the nation, 21-10 Utah. A stunning first quarter. Utah took a 21-0 lead. It's now 21-10. The Southwest Airlines halftime show is up next. Welcome back to the 75th All-State Sugar Bowl from the Louisiana Superdome at the half. Utah leading Alabama by the score of 21 to 10. As we welcome you back inside the broadcast booth, Kenny Albert along with Daryl Johnston, a stunning first quarter as Utah scored three touchdowns on their first three possessions, all three drives under two minutes. It was very impressive to watch as the game unfolded, and Utah comes out, they get into the no-huddle offense, go right down the field, and then Alabama is kind of chasing them for the remainder of that first quarter, but in the second quarter, they made some adjustments, they got some things done, they weathered the storm, it's 21-10 now. I thought Nick Saban and his staff did a great job not panicking in that situation. They played themselves back in by halftime, still missed a few opportunities, and some big things that they're gonna have to address in the second half that we'll get into. Alabama scored their touchdown on special teams, the 73-yard punt return for a touchdown by Javier Arenas. Our first half numbers brought to you 
by Dodge. Well, you can kind of see there just what happened in that first quarter. The Utah Utes, 150 yards in the first quarter, only 50 in the second. You can see that transition of Alabama hanging in there. Four sacks for the Utes. As we check in downstairs with Chris Myers. Chris. Kenny, Nick Saban spent the half trying to figure out why his team, as he said, lacked intensity in that opening quarter. Combined with the speed and efficiency of Utah, they got in a hole. And that couldn't have been because they were out partying all week. He had the curfew. He took him to a movie last night before the game, Valkyrie. That's the Tom Cruise movie. Not exactly a pick-me-up, but that's what his team needs. And he challenged his team at the half and said, what is your identity and what is the identity of Alabama football? He will be more aggressive making calls. He made some adjustments himself on the defensive calls in the second quarter and that helped slow down the Utah attack for more on Utah let's go to the other sideline of Carissa Thompson well guys catching up with coach Whittingham at halftime I said hey you started out just the way you wanted how do you finish that way he said continue to stop the run pressure on the quarterback and I mentioned Julio Jones you know I mentioned how he got some open looks towards the end of that second half he said yeah that all came in our zone coverage we got to do a better job on zone drops but I'll tell you one thing that halftime was way too long for him and Brian Johnson they were pacing back and forth right outside the locker room they can't wait to get out here and they get the ball first and Brian Johnson's got to be excited and remember there was that penalty on that last play of the half so look at Alabama kicking off from the 15 yard line to start this second half Utah should have great field position Utah deferred after they won the opening coin toss so they get the ball first here in the second half Brent Castile on the return and Castile Takes it out to the 45-yard line. Now all our Taco Bell impact players of tonight's game. Well, really, Brian Johnson has just done an outstanding job as the quarterback for the Utah Utes. Great decision-making, great accuracy with the football. When it's not there, he's pulled it down, moved the chains with some runs. You can see the two touchdown passes. And Javier Arenas, I mean, the game is kind of hanging in the balance for Alabama right there, and just a great individual effort on that 73-yard punt return. From their own 40. Johnson steps up, loses the football. And it's recovered by Bobby Greenwood of the Crimson Tide. And he returns it to the Utah 30. The first Utah turnover. What a huge missed opportunity by Utah. They get great field position to start this drive to have the five-yard penalty. And then a turnover on the second play. Dante Hightower, the linebacker, number 30, has moved to the outside as a rusher. One of the changements, one of the adjustments they made instead of playing him at the inside linebacker spot, there he is. They put him on the outside, and he's been rushing. That's one of the adjustments that Nick Saban made in that second quarter. It pays dividends right away here in the second half. Hightower forced it. The recovery by the senior, Greenwood. Now, can this Utah defense do something that Alabama was worried about offensively. Jim McElwain said what they do, we get down into that scoring position and they will force you out of field goal position. So they're at the 30 right now, not much farther to go to really be in a real easy field goal situation. Can Utah knock them back? Pass is caught by Julio Jones, gain of seven. Robert Johnson, Sean Smith on the tackle, fifth reception for the freshman Jones. Second and three. Alabama looking to capitalize on the first Utah miscue. Coffee. Coffee gains a yard down to the 22 yard line. Good hustle down the line by Keppa Geisen. Chasing that play down from the backside. Now this is the deepest penetration by the Alabama offense today. Well, they've gotten down into this part of the field, but they've kind of malfunctioned once they've gotten to this point. Once they've gotten near the 30-yard line, they've struggled with some plays, haven't been able to cash in and move deeper into that red zone. A 52-yard field goal and an attempt from 47 earlier. From the 23, Coffee looks to turn the corner. It will depend on the spot. Looks like Coffee 
did pick up the first down, took a hard hit from the strong safety, Joe Dale. Crimson Tide are in the red zone for the first time tonight. Little toss sweep out to the left. Trying to get Paul Kruger sealed. Joe Dale coming up on run support, but gets there a little bit late. Glenn Coffey able to stretch out for that first down. First and 10 from the Utah 19. This drive started on the 30. Following the turnover. John Parker Wilson looking left. He throws intended for Julio Jones, Sean Smith on the coverage. Well, you heard Carissa Thompson talk about Julio Jones as they came out for the second half and talked about zone drops, not being in good position on their zone drops. Now they've got Sean Smith manned up on Julio Jones. I thought we would have seen more of that in the first half. They felt confident in lining up Sean Smith against Julio Jones, maybe even matching him across the field and in formation. Second and 10 from the Utah 19. Wilson throws. The catch is made by the tight end Walker. And Nick Walker takes it all the way down to the Utah five yard line, setting up first and goal. 13 yards from Wilson to Walker. Good quick decision by John Parker Wilson. Take what's there. Nick Walker just on a little hook route right there in that open spot in the zone. Let him catch the ball and get north and south and get what he can. Coffee in the backfield. On first and goal, this is Coffee Inside the five and tackled at the four yard line by Kruger and Misi. Second and goal. Two tight ends. Coffee in the backfield. Second and goal from the four. John Parker Wilson to the end zone. Touchdown, Glenn Coffey. Nice little red zone call right there by Alabama. Gets John Parker Wilson out on the perimeter very quickly. He's got a run pass option. Glenn Coffey pops open in the flat, just dumps it to him for six. First receiving touchdown for Coffey this season. Tiffin the extra point. The Utah lead is now 21 17. Wilson to Coffey. Crimson Tide capitalize on the Brian Johnson turnover. Seven play, 30 yard drive following the Utah turnover. Alabama trail 21 0 with 4 0 1 remaining in the first quarter. They have scored 17 consecutive points. David Reed. Reed out to the 30. Let's go back and see how Glenn Coffey got so open. They're going to bring so much traffic across the formation. And what they're doing is they're isolating the linebacker in coverage right here, Mo Neal, on Glenn Coffey. Watch everything he has to run through trying to find his way. And there you go. Look at all that green space out in front. John Parker Wilson run pass option. He's got Glenn Coffey open in the flat. Nice play design with the motion and the crossing routes and bringing the back into the flat. Alabama within four. Johnson and the Utes start from their own 29. Johnson steps up. He throws, and the catch is made by Freddie Brown. It's a first down and more. Brown into Alabama territory, and he is finally dragged down by Greenwood. Brown's eighth reception. He gains 33 yards. Another great individual effort. Freddie Brown. This should be stopped for a nine-yard gain. 
A little hook pattern right there. Kareem Jackson missed tackle. Missed tackle. Knocks his own player off. Here comes Bobby Greenwood. Missed tackle. Finally gets him down. From the 38 on first down. Johnson again looking for Brown. Kareem Jackson on the coverage. Big night for Brown, the senior, out of Laverne, California. Second team, all Mountain West Conference. Nick Saban's third trip to the Sugar Bowl. Brought LSU to the Sugar Bowl twice. What a national championship here. As Johnson swings it out, looking for Mack. Almost a big play to Darrell Mack on the outside. They're going to bring pressure up inside, but they're fine. They've got the right play call. You're going to get the pressure in here to the middle, but they're going to get the back outside quick. Another pick. If that play had time to develop it, he would have been able to get it to Darrell Mack. That was going to be a nice gain down the sideline. Third down and 10. Alabama fans up on their feet. Utah over their last three on third down. Johnson making the connection with Godfrey. And Braden Godfrey picks up a first down, a gain of 11. Nice hand-to-eye coordination by Braden Godfrey. As soon as he came out of his break, that ball was on top of him. He got his hands up, made the catch. First and 10 from the Alabama 28. Again, it's Godfrey. Down to the 23-yard line, picks up five more. Justin Woodall made the tackle. Well, this tempo right here got everything started on their opening series of the game, going back to that no huddle, hurry up. Alabama now choosing to go with pressure as opposed to the first part of the game they were going with coverage. Utah back in the spread, second and five from the 23. Johnson dumps it off. He was looking for back. McLean got a piece of it. We asked Brian Johnson about playing indoors. He had never played in a dome before. Came to the Saints game with his teammates on Sunday. Checked out the lighting, felt the lighting would be an issue with the ball in the air. He said, I got a good feel for the crowd noise at the Superdome as well. Everybody thinks about the noise, but everybody forgets about the lights. And, and they really wanted the, an opportunity to get in here earlier in the week to be able to run some pass patterns and throw the ball as the receivers look back into those lights that are on the ceilings. Third down and 10 from the Alabama 28. Johnson, quick release, and the catch is made by Reed. He breaks free. Touchdown, David Reed. 28 yards. Fundamentals on this drive by the Alabama Crimson Tide. Poor tackling led to that touchdown. The first play by Freddie Brown. Missed tackles. Gives a 30-plus yard gain, and then there to finish the drive on the touchdown. Again, and the same player, Kareem Jackson, misses a critical tackle. Sixth touchdown reception of the season for Reed, a transfer from Pasadena City College. Set a junior college national record last season with 111 receptions into the end zone to extend the Utah lead. It's now 28-17 Utes. Seven play, 71-yard drive. All four touchdown drives for Utah tonight, Darrell, under two minutes. <laughs> Giddy up. That last drive, a, a minute 37. Javier Arenas down at the 29. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown by Utah. 
You're going to have three receivers to the outside. We're going to run three slants. We're going to have a slant here, but this backer is going to drop into that zone. We're going to have a slant here that gets jumped by this defender. Here's our last slant, and I want you to watch where the ball is thrown by Brian Johnson. Down in a way where Kareem Jackson can't make a play, spins out of the tackle. Six points, Utah. Great response by that Ute offense. Alabama trailing by 11. Play action. Wilson completes to Julio Jones on first down. Jones gains eight. Out to the 28-yard line as we check in with Chris Myers. Chris? Bud Coffey who keeled over in that last series and they didn't have him on short yardage when they failed to make it. He was kicked to the side had the wind knocked out of him. He expects to return possibly in this series but he won't be 100 percent. And Kenny and Darrell that's something Nick Saban told his team at halftime. Our identity is to be physical and tough and so far we haven't seen enough of that. The speed and quickness of Utah has had us on our heels. Well that was the big matchup Chris coming into this. How would that undersized quick front of Utah hold up against this big physical Alabama offense. They've done a great job. John Parker Wilson going deep through the hands of Alexander. There is a flag. Bryce McCain on the coverage tracking Earl Alexander downfield. Well, Bryce McCain sees the flag. He's not arguing his point. Interference on a defense number one. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Kyle Whittingham doesn't like it. He's got his hands in the air. We'll see what happens at the end coming out of the slot in the trail position. Uh, I got a little tug right there. Got a little handful of shirts slowing him down. <laughs> Bryce McCain already knows those little subtle tricks. Sixth Utah penalty. Under a minute remaining, third quarter. Wilson, near side, complete. Gain of six for the tight end, Brad Smelly. Freshman out of Tuscaloosa, his seventh reception this season. Len Coffey still on the sidelines. Ingram. The load back. Second down and four from the 49. Mark Ingram. And Ingram bottled up does not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Derek Shelby, freshman out of Houston, made the tackle. As the time winds down, it'll be a third down and three for Alabama. When we begin the fourth quarter, Glenn Coffey and David Reed exchanging third quarter touchdowns. Three quarters of the books. The Utah lead is 28-17. The All-State Sugar Bowl will return after these messages from your local station. Alabama ranked number one in the nation for five weeks prior to their loss to Florida. Trail heading into the fourth quarter for the first time this season. Glenn Coffey has returned. John Parker Wilson and the Crimson Tide will start from their own 31-yard line. On first down, Wilson to Julio Jones. Seventh catch for Jones. He gained six. Well, they have got Alabama out of their comfort zone right now. The Utah defense is going to force Alabama to move the ball down the field quickly. Now, will John Parker Wilson be patient enough to give what the defense is allowing, or is he going to try and get over the top and force something? Second down and four. Wilson wrapped up, loses the football, and it's recovered by Stevenson Sylvester. The seventh Utah sack, the second Alabama turnover. Sylvester on the call with the foul, but again, it's pressure coming from the secondary by Utah. Sean Smith 
on the secondary blitz, knocks it loose, and Stevenson Sylvester, who's had a heck of a game, there to recover the fumble. The Alabama offensive line allowed only 17 sacks all season heading into this game. Forced to revamp the line, the suspension to Smith, the injury suffered by Johnson. They've allowed seven sacks tonight. And we did not know what role that the Andre Smith decision was going to make with that Alabama team. But you know, Mike Johnson is out playing left tackle. He gets rolled up on. You know, does that happen if he's playing left guard? I mean, that suspension for this game has been such a critical factor because that Alabama line has been reshuffled there's only two of the five playing their normal positions and that is going to affect your protection and we have seen it all night long a little bit of confusion and who to pick up we've had free defenders to John Parker Wilson during the course of this game There's number four on the defensive side, Smith, who had the last sack, the forced fumble. Number four on offense for Utah, Asiata, gained three on first down, and he will take the snap again here. Asiata down to the 37-yard line. So the Utah Utes looking to remain the only unbeaten team in the nation. Timeout called by the Crimson Tide, 424 left to play. The Utah Utes have never beaten an opponent from the SEC. 0-6 all time. They started this 2008 season with a victory, Darrell, in Ann Arbor in front of 108,000 fans looking to put the exclamation point on a 13-0 campaign. They are four minutes, 24 seconds away. But it was that Oregon State game and they came back and won it at the end that gave them the confidence in the field that this could be something special this season. Third down and six from Trickery. Rick Castillo picks up a first down. And a late flag. Late hit out of bounds. Dangerous yet effective. You know what? We, everybody talks about it with a game like this, with Utah going up against Alabama. Some trickery at some point. After the runner went out of bounds, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense, number 49. Half the distance to the goal, first down. We've been waiting for it, waiting for it. Was it going to be in special teams? Something on the offense. The motion from around the back. The catch, the flip, a critical third down. They wait all the way until just over four minutes to go in the fourth quarter on a critical third down with a little trickery. And then 15 more with a little bit of frustration from Rashad Johnson. So it gives Kyle Whittingham a chance to smile. Under four minutes on the clock. Asiata takes the snap. Asiata tackled in the backfield, loses a yard. Eric Andrews made the tackle. Timeout. Alabama. Fans now chanting undefeated. The Utah portion of this crowd, over 71,000 in attendance. Asiata now to the 12-yard line. And the Crimson Tide will use their final timeout. Three forty-one remaining, fourth quarter. Utah finished undefeated back in 2004. Beat Pitt in the Fiesta Bowl, finished 12 and 0. Kyle uh, Whittingham replaced Urban Meyer following that undefeated season. 
Utah three minutes 41 seconds away from 13-0 in 2008. Asiata. I mentioned earlier Utah the first team from a non BCS conference to play in two BCS bowl games who referred to their Fiesta Bowl victory over Pitt who could forget Boise State over Oklahoma in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl two years ago and last year Hawaii losing to Georgia 41 10 in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Well let the conversation begin about the greatest team in the history of Utah football. Is it the 04 team or the 08 team and not to take anything away from Urban Meyer and Alex Smith and what that group did but Kyle Whittingham and Brian Johnson and his group coming to the Sugar Bowl tonight against Alabama. A team that held the number one ranking in the country for five weeks. That's just a fantastic job tonight. 28 yard attempt, Louis Sakota. And Sakota connects. Second of the nation in scoring. Four extra points and a field goal for Sakota tonight. 249 remaining. As the kickoff is bobbled and taken at the 25 yard line by Huber. And the fullback. Speaking of Darrell Johnston and your Sugar Bowl appearance, the fullback Huber returns it out to the 49. Don Parker Wilson sacked. Guess who? Stevenson Sylvester. His third sack, the eighth for the Utes. He has had an outstanding game on the defensive side of the ball. A little bit of everything for Stevenson Sylvester tonight. Coming from the top of your screen. Just too quick on that edge for Drew Davis. Eight Utah sacks. Second and 18. As Wilson throws it away. 2-0-1 on the clock. So who received the trophy back in 88? That's a good question. I think we both did. I know there's one in Syracuse. I'm sure there's one in Auburn. Oh, Kenny. That's a good question. You know, I just want to let the viewers know we were down on the field before the game and Darrell punted one. Actually took another <laughs> Shot at the quick kick, showed great technique, 21 years and one day later. Still got the roll, too. Third down at 18. Wilson moving to his left, looking. Now he fires downfield, and this ball will be intercepted. It's the second pick of the game for Robert Johnson. Anything that John Par Parker Wilson can do, you got to try and create in this situation when you're down 14, going to his go to guy, Julio Jones. But Robert Johnson goes up and gets it. He's still down on the field right now. Taking a look at his right knee, must have landed awkwardly when he came down. Junior from Los Angeles underwent offseason shoulder surgery. Has two interceptions today, doubling his total for the season. Keep an eye on his right leg. Oh, just kind of hyperextends. You can see when he landed, kind of went out the back. The Utah portion of the crowd continues to chant undefeated as Alabama. Started the season 12 and 0. Lost to Florida 31 20 on December 6th in the SEC championship game. 
ending their 13-game win streak, are going to lose for the second straight game to finish up their season. Utah, three first-quarter possessions after they deferred, after winning the coin toss, three first-quarter touchdowns to take a 21-0 lead. About as well as they could have played in the first quarter, and then Javier Arenas, I mean, just a great individual effort to get it to 21-10 at that time. They got it to 21-17 at one point, and then a huge drive by the Utah Utes, capped off by a touchdown reception by David Reed to take it back to 28-10. And Alabama just not able to regain that momentum. Terrific job by our entire crew here in New Orleans, led by producer Barry Landis, director Michael Frank. Thanks also to Matt Banovic, Rick Camps, Dave Chorus, Ben Bulba, Rich Ackerman, Joe Sherman, Bar in Boston, Jim Hoffer up at the broadcast booth, and Liz Abel and Jeff Purinton of the Sports Information Departments of Utah and Alabama. The Utah Utes are going to win a school record 13th game of the season. Their 14th win overall, longest streak in the nation. Eight consecutive bowl wins, longest streak in the nation. Their first ever victory <laughs> over an opponent from the Southeastern Conference. Uh, Paul Kruger doing his best to lobby for Stevenson Sylvester for the MVP. It's going to come down to him or Brian Johnson. Three sacks for Sylvester. 322 yards in the air, three touchdowns for Johnson. The Utah Utes conclude a perfect season for head coach Kyle Whittingham, who spent three years of his childhood here in New Orleans. His late dad, Fred, a member of the New Orleans Saints. Kyle, play for the New Orleans Breakers here in the Louisiana Superdome. A perfect season, 13-0. While the Alabama Crimson Tide finish up the year at 12 and 2. The Utah Utes, the champions of the 75th All-State Sugar Bowl. What an impressive job by Utah. And they shocked everybody. We mentioned it at the top. Utah alums and the people in the state of Utah had confidence that they'd be able to come in here and do exactly this. But the majority of the people around this country felt Alabama would respond after that difficult loss to Florida in the SEC championship game. Utah jumped on them from the get-go. And Alabama really never got back into this game. Just a tremendous job by Kyle Whittingham and his staff. Gary Anderson on his last game coaching with the Utah Utes before he heads to Utah State. A great defensive plan to stop that Alabama offense. Utah over Alabama by the score of 31-17. A lot more coming up. Chris Rose and the gang from Los Angeles. And then the trophy presentation from the Superdome. The Utah Utes undefeated 13-0.